Hey, do you want to write your own hacking script? A successful hacker always makes his own tool better than the others. Many of you might have gone through many hacking tools, but have you ever noticed how those tools are created? If yes, but you don't know what is bash scripting, then you are far away from your goal. And that's why here I am. So let me welcome you to this brand new video on the basics of bash programming language. And in this single video you will learn all about the commands, variables, functions and also the looping techniques. Basically the main focus of this video is to make you guys well informed about this language, so that you can use this to increase your productivity, write scripts and also you can customize your Termix or Linux environment as you want. And at the end of this video I will teach you to create a simple updating and upgrading program for your Termix or Linux shell. And by running that single program you can easily update and upgrade your Termix, whenever you want. And I will also teach you to attach the program on your Termix bash file, so that whenever you turn on the Termix, it will be updated and upgraded as well. So bring a copy and a pen and note down everything I show you and let's start the video and learn some new. If you are using Termix or any Linux system, and you say you don't know Bash, then I'll say you are lying. Because, the Termix or the Linux, is nothing just a Bash. The command we use on Termix, are nothing but the Bash commands. CD, LS, PWD, Clear, APT install, all are the Bash commands. So I think you don't need so much time to understand this, as you have used it before, right? Now our first step is to install a text editor, and I know you have already installed it. So let's create a new bash file, and write some codes. So type nano hello.sh, and before starting anything, let me please create another session, so that I can show you some examples of some commands. Because we can use the bash commands on our terminal, but to keep them attached in a particular program we need to store them, so that's why we need to create a new file for our program. So as we all know, our first program is going to be a simple hello world program. And like the print command on Python, we will use here the echo command. So, type echo hello world. No. Echo hello my dear viewers. This line is our message to be shown, but in programming it is called as a string. So remember that a string is nothing but some sequence of characters. And after this, save the file with control plus O, and hit enter and then exit the editor by control plus x. Now, I will go to that session and will show you the output. So before running this program we have to give the permission to it. And to do so, type chmod plus x hello.sh. And then, run the program by dot slash hello.sh. And see, it's working, right? Now, there are a lot more to know about this command. And of course I will show you step by step. So, Echo has some particular options or tags you can say, that provide us different features. And these are those tags, and also I have mentioned their workings, but you will understand it when you use it. So let's pick the first one, that is dash E. So, E is used to escape the backslash character on our string or message. Basically, to create a new line in our message. We need to use this slash n tag inside our string, but if we do not use this e tag, echo will never ignore this backslash character, it will take this as a character, and will print this whole line, and your result will be like this. So to solve this issue, we need to use this e tag, and let me show you by adding this tag. And see, a new line is created between these two words, right? I am very sorry for making this video long. But I must tell you this, so that you never make this type of silly mistakes later. Now let's head towards the other tags. Now our next options are dash T and dash V, which are called horizontal and vertical tabs respectively. The usage of these tags are to add a little bit of space or tab horizontally and vertically as well. You don't need to go deep into these option. I am just simply showing you how these two work. And as you can see I've added these two tags here. And let's see what it actually does. See, there becomes some space over here, so that's what it does. You can try it using differently. Using these two, you can also make some beautiful characters. Tell me if you want a video on it. Anyway, now I will show you how you can take input from user, and also to print that input as an output. But before this, you need to know variables. Technically, 
A variable is an abstract storage location paired with an associated symbolic name, which contains some known or unknown quantity of data or object referred to as a value. But simply, a variable is like a storage, where we store some values, whether it is a string or a number, so that we can use it later on. So, what is a variable? A variable is a storage or a box, where we use to keep our information or message, so that we can keep it safe, and to use it later when we need it. And now let's create a variable. It is very simple to create, you just have to type the name of the variable, like this, and add the message or information you want to save here, and to do it, enter a equal sign, and inside a comma, enter your information. Remember, a variable name is case sensitive and can contain letters numbers, and underscore, not any special characters. And a variable name cannot start with a number and it cannot have any white space. So always start with a letter while naming and avoid these mistakes. Now we have created a variable, and added some data inside it, and let's print it out. So type echo dollar sign, and type the variable name, without leaving any space between the sign and the name. And save the file. And see, here it is. You have successfully learned how to use variable, but there are two types of variable, global variable and local variable. This particular variable is called global variable, and I'll tell you what is the local one, when we start the functions, okay. Now let's use this variable to take input from the user. So, I'll here ask a question to the user, like, what is your name? And in response of this, the user will type his name, and that will be stored in this variable name but we need to type, read before this. This line of code is ordering our machine to read the input and store it in this variable, name. And as a reply, our machine will greet the user, as, welcome to Termex, and will write his name, and will say, please have a good day ahead. Here, I've shown you two things, one, how to take input and store it, and the other is how we can add strings or message before and after printing out the variable. So let's try this. And remember to save your file once you edit it. And see, it's asking my name. Let's say Rocky Pi. And here it is. Welcome to Termex Rocky Pi. Please have a good day ahead. And that's it. Now, it is time to create a simple update and upgrade program for our Termex. But if you are on other Linux, you need to change a little bit of things. And of course I'll mention it. Let me create a new file. Like update.sh. And here I will show a message like, echo-e, turning on the main engine. I'll use a new line here. Then, checking system condition. Another new line, optimizing battery, optimizing resources, then checking for update. Starting the update. Then here I will use our apt update command. And then, apt upgrade-y command. And once it done, it will show another message, like, Echo-E, system is up, and welcome back chief, you are ready to attack, and that's it. As usual, save the file, give the permission, chmod plus x update.sh, and run it, dot slash update.sh. And our program is running as we expected, right, I fast forwarded the clip, and see all the messages are looking so cool, isn't it? Now. This program will help you to update and upgrade your Termex by using just a single command instead of writing two commands separately. I will tell you how you can add this in the bash file of your Termex, but not now. Now, we will see decision making conditions and loops of the bash programming, and we will end our video with the function. So there are two types of decision making conditions, which are if else statement and case sac statement, and let's start with if else. This section is interesting and confusing too, so please concentrate and try to understand the syntax or the rule of this statement. Let's say, here I have asked his name, and as a response, the user will enter his name. Now assume that, there is some message from me to the user and it is stored with respect to the username, and this machine can only deliver it or the user can only receive it when this machine confirms the username. So, for that purpose. The username must be previously stored in our program, right? And that's what I am going to do. I will check the username if it match with our database. And if the username is same as we have here, then our message will be shown. So here we need to start if else condition. 
The syntax of the if-else statements are like this. Here, it starts with if, and inside the square brackets, there will be the condition, and then, and after this, our statement, and then we have to close this block using fi. So, like this, we are going to implement our idea. Write if, then add square brackets, and inside it, we match our variable with a name, because, inside this variable, the username will be saved, once he enters it, right, so, inverted comma, dollar sign, and the variable, then equal to, and inside the inverted comma, enter the name we want, let's say Iron Man, and after the bracket, we need to add a colon, and then, and here we have to add our message, so Echo, come to my office and pick me to USA for a cup of tea. And after that, we need to close the if block using fi. And that's it, let's save the code, and try it. You may think this is a simple program, but this simple program will deliver you a great thing, which you are going to see at the end of this video. So, it's asking my name, Iron Man, and see, message is shown. But if I enter other name except Iron Man, it will show a error, and see, what it gives, right? So, in this way you can make your own scripts like this, and of course you can improve it too. And let me give you a task, complete this simple task and comment down below, I will definitely highlight your name in my next video. So the task is, improve this program, and add some new names here, and also some new message. I mean, each name must contain a message, for different users, different messages. Understand, add three to four names more. You can use any name and any message. Here I have added only one name, so add some more. And don't worry, I will teach you a little bit more on adding new conditions. Let's come back to our program. And suppose you want to add another name, so what we have to do is, after this message, we need to add elif and after this, add square brackets, and inside this, write the same condition mentioned above, but this time, our name will be different. Let's say Hulk, and then, and after it, write the message, Echo, come and help me break someone's eggs. And if the user enters another name except these two, you can show a message here, and to do that, you have to type, else before this fi, and then add the message, Echo, sorry, we don't have any message for you. And that's it. Save the file, and test it. So run it, enter Hulk, and see the message. And if we try to enter another name here, let me run it again. And see what it says. It's working well, right? So your task is to add some more names here. And you can add multiple numbers of elif here. So go ahead, it's very easy. Now, let us see what is case sac statement is. This is also like the if else. And we will use the same idea we used earlier. And the syntax of this technique is very simple. You just write here case, then the variable just after the dollar sign, and inside the inverted commas, and then in. After this, enter a name inside commas, then write bracket, and then the message, echo, come to my office and pick me to USA for a cup of tea but here we will use two colons, okay. So this was case 1, and our next case is, Hulk, so do the same as above, come and help me break someone's eggs. And in this way you can add multiple cases, as many as you want. But I'll stop here, and you try adding more, okay. And once you complete it, close this block with ESAC. Now, save the file, and let's, try it. Let's say, Hulk, and here it is. Now if you are still here, please press the like button, it's free, right? Anyway. I will make a proper detailed video on these topics, please tell me if you want. And, it's time for loops. So there are three types of loops, for loop, while loop, and until loop. Different loops have different rules. So please note down everything I show you, but what can we do with loops in programming? Basically loops allow us to shorten what could be hundreds of lines of code to just a few. This allows us to write the code once and repeat it as many times as needed, making it more likely for the program to run as expected. Simply looping helps us to create or show a similar thing multiple times with just single command. 
Instead of writing the same thing multiple times, write. Let's start with the for loop. So with this, we can print a message as many times as want. And that's what I am going to show. Please write down the syntax. It's more confusing than if else statement. The for loop statement follows this type of syntax. It starts with for then braces, and inside it, our condition will be there. After that, we need to type do, and then our statement or message to be shown. And at last, it ends with done. Simple, right? But there are some more syntax of for looping. But as a beginner, this is enough for you. Now here I'll show you the simplest example of using for loop. So suppose you want to print some numbers. Let's say 1 to 10. Right. And if we do it using echo only, we have to type 10 lines of codes for different numbers. Like, echo 1, echo 2, echo 3, and so on. And see our program is working fine. But in this case, if we use for loop, we don't have to write all these things. Our codes will be shortened. And because of this, our program size will be smaller. And as a result it will work faster. So let me show you. 4. Add two braces. Here, we need to add a variable. Let's say number. Where this number means number. Just assume that. And we will assign a value to it. It will be our first number. So type 1. Since we want to show 1 to 10 numbers. Then add a colon. And then our condition which is, number is less or equal to 10, so that it does not exceed 10, right? Then again we have to add a colon, and then the final command, number plus plus. This last code means that, the value in our variable, will increase itself by 1 and it will stop increasing once it reaches 10. And after this, type do, and in the next line, add a little bit of space, and then show the variable, echo dollar sign and number, and complete the block with done. Right. And that's it. Very simple. Now save the code with Ctrl plus O, and then try it. And here is our output. See, why looping is very useful for programming. It actually decrease our coding time, and increase our productivity. And you can add any number here. I mean, you can print as many number or message you want. Now there are some very effective and useful examples of this for loop. And let's take another one. So how many of you know about factorial of a number? In short, a factorial is a function that multiplies a number by every number below it till 1. For example 3, the factorial of 3 will be 3 by 2 by 1 which is equal to 6. Right. But can you tell me what will be the factorial of 12? In 10 seconds. No. But our program can do it in less than 2 seconds using for loop. And let's do that. Let us ask our user to enter a number for which he or she want to calculate the factorial. Echo enter a number. Now, save his answer a in a variable, read number. And we need to create another new variable to store the result or the calculated factorial value. Right. So say, fact, and let's assign a value for it at 1. So initially, the result is 1, because, we cannot leave it blank, but I will tell you later why I have chosen one and not other. Anyway let's start the for loop. 4. Braces. Add a new variable. Let's say i. And since we will increase it. So assign 1 as a value. Then colon. And then. Our next condition. i less or equal to number. Because we need to multiply the numbers below the number given by the user. So this condition will prevent our machine to exceed the number. Right. And let me tell you. If you do not understand perfectly any part of this video. Please tell me so that I can make a better video for you. Now our last condition is I++. Now, using the curly brackets, we can also complete the block, so we don't need to write do and done here. Okay. Now inside these brackets, the formula for the calculation will be written, and that will be this, fact which is our resultant variable, and it is equal to, dollar sign and inside two brackets, write, fact asterisk i, and here asterisk means multiplication. Here we must use the dollar sign. Because the multiplication is in between the variables, if we do not use the sign, our machine will be confused. Basically this dollar sign tells the machine that this is a variable. Now one last step is left, and that is to show the result, right? So out of this block, right, echo and the variable. And that's it. I will tell you later, how this calculation takes place, but for now, just see the result, save the file, and let's try it.
let's check it for 5, and see, 120, absolutely perfect, right. Now let's understand the formula. Here, we have already stored 1 in our variable fact, right. And in this for loop, the initial value of i was 1, but, in the next step, it will check if 1 is less than the value we entered, which was 5, right. And since it is true, I mean, 1 is less than 5 right. So, it will then multiply the value of i with the value inside the fact. Which will give 1, ok. And then the loop will increase the value of i by 1, and the result will be 2, right. And then this 2 will be multiplied with the value inside the fact, which was 1, and the new result will be 2, and after that, the value of fact, which was 1, will be replaced by the new result, 2, right. Now, the loop will again check the value of i, that is 2, if it is less than or equal to 5, and since it is also true, it will increase it by 1, and it will be then 3. Please try to understand it, ok, it is very interesting and also confusing, you might feel it so boring, but if you can get it, you are done. There is no rocket science. Now, this new value of i, which is 3, will be multiplied with the value inside the variable fact which was 2, right, and the result will be 6, and this value is then stored in place of the previous value, inside the variable fact. So the new value of fact is 6. And then, it will do like this up to i equal to 5. And once the value of i becomes 6, it will check the second condition, which was, i less or equal to number. And our number was 5, so it does not meet the condition we given, so the loop will stop working. And once the compiler completes the loop block, it will come to the end statement of our program, which is to show the result inside the variable fact. And that's what it did, right? Now, please tell me if you've perfectly understood it or not. Because, if this teaching method is not working, I must change it, right? So please tell me. Now I don't want to tell you about the other loops, in this video, because it can cause confusion in your mind. So practice this for loop for some days, and I will make a separate video on the other things that I've left, okay. And let's check what function is. But if you are feeling bored, then skip this section to the end, because I know, learning programming is a very boring thing, I know that, you may also feel that, that's why I'm saying. So skip this part and head towards the end. At the end I have shown you how we can add our previous update upgrade program in the bash file of Termix. And I've also modified that using if else statement. Now, technically, in computer programming, a function is a sequence of program instructions that performs a specific task, packaged as a unit. This unit can then be used in programs wherever that particular task should be performed. Simply, a function contains some set of codes or commands, what you like to say, and that particular codes can be used repeatedly multiple times by just calling the function name. So to use some long lines of codes multiple times in a program, we don't need to write them multiple times, we just write them once, and put it inside a function, and we can call the function, whenever we need it, right? Let me show it with an example. So, the syntax or rule for a function, is written like this. Function name, then brackets, function naming is almost same like variable naming. And after this, we use curly brackets. And inside that, our statements or codes are written. And out of this block, to use the codes inside the function, we call the function like this, just write the function name. So, let's take a simple example, and then I'll take a bigger one. So, write the function name, say, new function, then braces, then curly brackets, write. So here, I will write, echo, please subscribe to advanced coding. Then I'll just call it. New function, that's it. Now save the file, and see the result. But in this case, if you want to print this line two times, you need to call the function two times. Like this. And if you see the result, it will come two times, right? But you may have a question here, why did I not use loops instead of this? Because that also works like this. So the reason is, loops work only once. The machine will go to the loop, then execute it, and after that it will show the result. 
Loops work serially in one go, but we can call a function whenever we need. For example, if we write some more codes here, like, echo good morning, echo good night, and if I call my function now, it will also work. C, but loops do not work like, more or less, everything in programming has some special feature, and you should know everything, okay. Now, let's take a bigger and a useful example of this function. So the idea is to calculate square of two numbers, one by one, so, create a function, square, and inside it, we will use two variables, and these two variables are called local variable, so write, local number equal to dollar sign and one, this one represents the first argument of our program, argument is nothing but the value we assign to the variables of a functions, but here, one is not a value, one is representing that there will not be one value only for this variable, so please keep numbering it one by one, okay. And then, another variable, square, which stores the result of the square of this number. So in bash, if we write a formula using variable names, we write it like this, first dollar sign, the two brackets, and inside, the formula, in this case, number into number, right. And the last thing is to show the result, so echo the square of number is square. And that's it for the function. Now, we need to take the inputs from the user, so write, echo, please enter first number. Then read number one. Now again we have to do it for the second number. But we will do it in another style, instead of writing two lines like this, we can do it in one line, I have shown you both the two methods so that you learn everything. So, read dash p then the message inside commas, enter the second number and then the variable, number 2. That's it. So these two variables number 1 and number 2 are called global variable, because it is outside the function, and our function can use both global and local variables, but outside the function, we cannot use the local variables which are inside the function. Okay, now, inputs are taken, calculations are done, and our next and the final thing is to call the function type square, and use variable number 1, and this method is called calling a function with argument. Here number 1 variable is an argument, the user will enter the number, then that argument or the input will pass to the function's local variable, which is number. Then after taking the second input, call the function, for variable number 2, and we are done. Now save the file, and let's check it out. Say first number is 5, and C25 is the result and the second number is 6, and 36. So, in this way, you can take advantages of the functions, but there are some more very useful programs, you will not understand those now, anyway. Hope you've understood all these perfectly, and if not, please let me know. Now let's jump back to our customization program, which was update.sh. And here, using the if-else condition, I will add a security layer, so please try to modify it in your style. I am just doing it simple. So after this upgrade command, and before these funny lines, I will ask myself a question, and it will be like, read dash p who are you, and store the input in the variable, username. Now if, username equal to Druv, then. Now, put all these line here, system is up, and welcome back chief, you are ready to attack. Now, save the file, and try running it. Since it will update, let me fast forward the video. So, if I enter my name, see it is greeting me. And again, if I enter another name, see, that's so amazing right? So try this with your own words, and now let's put this program on our bash file, and to do so, type pwd, to check if you are on your home directory or not. As you can see I am in home directory, and if you are not here. You can come here by just typing cd command only. Okay, now, to make this program run, while you turn on your termix, this program must be in the home directory, so if you have created it in different directory, then copy it to here, or create a new one. Now, type cd and two dots, with this command I have come one directory back. And here, type cd usr slash etc. Done. Now. Type nano bash dot bash rc, so this is the bash file of our Termix machine, you can see all the commands and codes here, and since you have now a little bit of knowledge on bash, 
You can also try to understand the codes written here, so try it if you have time. Now our task is at the end of this file, so scroll down here. We need to enter the command for running our program, which is dot slash update dot sh. And that's it. Now save the file with control plus O, hit enter, and then exit nano with control plus X. Now, restart your Termix, and see, it's working, isn't it so cool? So that's all in this video, if you've understood everything perfectly then it will be a great motivation for me, but if not, then please tell me, I'll definitely try to remake those topics. And thank you for being till the end. Please share this video among your close ones. And please keep visiting my blog for all the codes and also some more details will be there.